Hello and welcome to Team 10's Senior Project Presentation, a cold rolling mill sponsored by Grand Valley State University. Our team was comprised of Nicholas Fiore, Nicholas Erickson, Austin Blumenthal, Andrew Mitchell, Trey Pfeiffer, and Michael Verweiss. The problem posed for Team 10 Senior Project was that Grand Valley State University's engineering program currently lacks the equipment necessary to experiment with cold rolling, which is a subject in EGR 250, Material Science and Engineering. To this end, a cold rolling mill had to be designed and constructed, which would allow students to gain hands-on experience with cold rolling processes. Constraints specifications for this project were as follows. The budget given to us by GVSU was $5,000. The overall footprint for the full mill assembly was to be less than 42 inches wide by 84 inches long. Originally, the mill's final destination was going to be in the corner of the EGR250 Keller lab room. However, this had changed and the current final location for the mill is unknown at this point, which is why the mill was made mobile. The mill was to be designed to be able to deform quarter inch thick cartridge brass samples. The hardness of the rollers had to be harder than that of the samples being cold rolled to prevent deformation of the rollers. The mill had to be designed to be able to compress the sample's thickness by 50%. The required minimum parts per hour was 10 to allow students to be able to finish their samples and their lab within the allotted lab period. The specimen insertion height was to be between 38 inches and 48 inches due to ergonomics. This allows most people to comfortably insert the sample without bending over too far or stretching too far to insert the sample. The mill was to be powered by 120 volt AC 15 amp power provided by a wall outlet in the lab room. A control panel was to be included to allow easy use of the mill with the push of a button. This included a start, stop, and emergency stop button. One emergency stop button was to be included in this design. The emergency stop button could be no farther than 20 inches away from the operator so that power shutoff would be easily accessible in case of emergency. An optional requirement also included that the final mill be given a final coat of paint in GBSU's official school colors. Research into cold rolling mills provided an overview of the functions necessary for design and construction. A function structure diagram was produced as a sort of roadmap to determine the inputs, outputs, and processes involved in the use of a cold rolling mill. Important inputs were the undeformed metal sample, mechanical energy, electrical energy, and a signal. The resultant outputs would be the deformed sample, noise, and heat. Special considerations had to be made for the signals involved, starting and stopping the rollers, and overall deformation amount of the sample. A weighted pew matrix was utilized to determine the best concept, given a list of criteria based on the specifications and function structure diagram. These criteria were cost, reliability, size, ease of assembly, and ease of use. After an initial review, six concepts were found to meet all necessary criteria, and these were compared against one another. Concept 3, possessing the highest total score, was the selected design. The winning concept, Concept 3, was a mobile cart design, which would protect the electronics and motor assembly inside. This design included an easy-to-access e-stop flap, as well as a sliding tray to feed the sample into the roller assembly. Some modifications would be made as the project progressed, but overall, this design was adhered to.
The mill was to be powered using a wall outlet that provided 120 volt AC 15 amp power. The motor is protected using a 13 amp circuit breaker. The motor had a full load amperage of 12.8 amps. A safety relay was used to provide more safety by incorporating an emergency stop button and two miniature contactors. The mill would be turned on by a normally open start button and stopped with a normally closed stop button. Redundant contactors provided further motor and user protection. All wires used were 14 gauge wires. We have an image of the Durston F-130. It is a pre-constructed mill purchased in order to reduce the cost of constructing a mill of our own. We modified this mill by removing the handle as well as modifying the key that attaches to the handle to allow for our shaft coupler to be mounted along the Durston. Several key safety considerations were taken into account during the planning and construction of this mill. The first of these was the safety shield. It was designed alongside ANSI and ISO standards and was created using two plexiglass panels on the front and back side of the Durston mill. This was designed to protect both the user and the mill from any unwanted or large samples from damaging the Durston or the user. The push slider was, designed to keep, was also designed to keep fingers away from the spinning rollers. It would protect both the mill and the user from unwanted materials being pushed in because it is the size approximately of, this, of the samples that would be put in. It is also designed to be removable such that if access to the Durston is required, it can be accessed quite easily. You can see images of the two safety mechanisms described previously. On the left, we have the push slider mechanism. In the image, you can see the two knobs that are used to guide the sample into the rollers as necessary. And on the right, we have the safety shield, a much simpler mechanism just designed to keep any um, unwanted body parts or materials from entering the rollers. As of yet, it has not yet been implemented into the mill. The final total cost of the entire mill assembly was $4,531. This was slightly more than we had estimated due to some issues with dimensions on our shaft coupler that were incorrectly provided by the manufacturer. Therefore, another shaft coupler of the correct size needs to be purchased. The electric component enclosure, which included the circuit breaker, safety relay, and contactors, was around a total of $275. The push button controls, which included the start and stop buttons, a small housing to protect the buttons, and the emergency stop button came in around $140. The majority of the budget was spent on the motor, gearbox, our pre-purchased mill, and our cart enclosure. All of those costs together were just slightly under $3,000. Miscellaneous costs included things such as extra fasteners, zip ties for electrical wires, etc. These are two pictures of the CAD of the final plant assembly of the cold rolling mill. On the front of the machine, you can see the emergency stop flap. On the top of the machine, you have the operator push buttons, the mill itself, and the push slider assembly. You can see an exploded view of the design that we have created. At the very top, we have the Durston mill, followed by the push slider assembly and the on-off buttons. Additionally, there is the... Um, covering for the gearbox and shafts, as well as the top plate. The outfeed tray is below the top plate. The next is the entirety of the frame of the machine, and surrounding that are all four panels. We also have the electrical box, which is to the right of the frame. The motor gearbox assembly can be seen below the frame, and below that we finally have the roller wheels that allow it to stay mobile. Given the initial space constraint of 42 by 84 inches, the team strived to create a compact design for ease of mobility and placement. The final design occupied a 24 and a quarter by 30 and a quarter inch footprint, thus meeting the size specification. Construction has adhered to this design, and thus the final product is within specification. For the performance of our machine, we are currently in testing phase. In this phase, we are checking both the mechanical and the electrical systems, ensuring that both are working properly. We are currently able to roll previously hardened cartridge brass to 25% thickness.
it was much harder to roll this previously hardened material. In the, and we are now currently in process of sourcing annealed brass, which is much softer, which will allow us to do further testing. We are also comparing many of our mathematical calculations to the real world results that we are getting. We have started looking into roller lubrication to prevent samples from warping as they are passed through the rollers multiple times. Additionally, paneling will be added to our machine once testing is completed. Rolling. One of the biggest design challenges was the coronavirus pandemic. It led to greatly increased lead times for many of our components and materials. Thus, we had to construct things out of order in order to prepare them for when the newer components would come in. Additionally, there were many increased costs for some of these components. Uh, thus, we had to search across for many different sellers to find the best option. The Durston CAD, which is our rolling head, was unavailable. This became a problem when the manufacturer gave us incorrect shaft diameters, uh, which led to the purchase of the wrong shaft coupler that we needed. Thus, we had to construct a new key for the current shaft and purchase a cheaper coupler alternative to make sure that it still worked. While testing the cold rolling mill, strengths and weaknesses have become apparent in the design and construction. A strength of note is the ability to roll half-hardened brass. The design is mobile and compact, thus allowing it to be used in a number of different areas, and combined with the 120-volt power requirement, it can be utilized almost anywhere on campus where a plug is available. Overall, it's a very easy product to use. Some weaknesses, however, include the inability to roll steel and the unforeseen requirement of lubrication to prevent warping of a metal sample. The current method of removing a jam sample is also inconvenient and difficult. Future improvements to this product are immediately visible and mainly have to deal with power and power transmission. A stronger motor, greater than the current one horsepower motor, would greatly increase the base torque and RPM, thus increasing the overall ability of the system to roll metal samples. With an increase in strength, this could also allow for the use of steel samples in future tests. The current system also has a high current demand, as it is a single phase. Moving up to a 240-volt dual-phase power source would decrease the current requirement while maintaining torque and RPM. This improvement would not require a new motor, but a change to the electrical system and wiring. The current removal method for a jam sample requires a bit of work with regards to the top panels and covers on the rolling mill. This could be redesigned for easier access, so that a jammed sample could be removed quickly.